one of the most interesting things is when you come to your WooCommerce shop, add a product, and they're able to actually go view it. Then uh, check if you need to update and proceed to checking out. Fill in your order form and then when you come to the part for payment, you choose your payment that is available and you place your order. And your order is received. But in many countries that are available, we find that there's an issue with uh, how most of these payments are received. Some countries don't accept credit cards, others don't have PayPal which are actually some of the commonest ways of managing your payments as comes by default to WooCommerce. So today I'm going to show you how to create your own uh, WooCommerce uh, payment plugin that you can hook it with your kind of uh, payment that's acceptable in your own country. I'll teach you the basics, then you'll be able to apply those and make them better and even uh, more stable for yours. When you're ready, Please release that plugin on uh, the WordPress repo so that all other people can benefit from it. So let's jump into the code. I have created a, a small folder in my plugins uh, folder and I'm going to just drop it in my editor. And it's actually called uh, New Payment for WooCommerce. And that's what I'm going to call my file. So I'll just uh, notice I don't just say WooCommerce new payment because there are actually uh, restrictions in how you use this name uh, which is WooCommerce because it's trademarked. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is actually open up PHP and then uh, I'll start my plugin. I have a little snippet that helps me start up these plugins and so I'll call it uh, new payment for WooCommerce and then I'll add my author link, which for now is just that. So now we are ready to actually jump in. So I'll save this and then I just go to my plugins section and then just activate it. Then we can start seeing the difference of what's happening inside our plugin. So I'll just activate new payment. Now, first things first. Uh, the payment gateway system that you see is actually an extension of the Woo settings API. Uh, if you want to see this, you'd need to come to WooCommerce and then just look at uh, the developer section. That is WooCommerce for developers. Then uh, you would look up the payment gateways. So you look up something like custom payment gateways and then you'd go to the payment gateway API. They showcase how you can start to build this. However, it's a little bit complex. Um, that's why I just want to break it down and give you a live demo. But when you go to the core gateways, for example, the cash on delivery that we see, you find out that your own class of uh, the payment gateway is going to just be an extension of the Woo settings API. After setting up for our plugin, what we're going to do next is actually just activate our plugin and we are good to go. So the first thing that we can do is to check if in our active plugins we have WooCommerce installed. For example, right now, I actually don't have WooCommerce installed actively. It's not activated. So we will check to see if that is available so that we end up not failing in the whole process. So we'll do an if statement. And then when that passes, then we run some code. So we'll say if not in array, because all our installed plugins are actually saved in an array of form. So we're going to look for if, if in that array WooCommerce uh, slash WooCommerce.php is actually not in there, apply some filters. So we'll apply filters, which is a WordPress function. Uh, it actually requires for us to add a tag and for us that tag is going to be active plugins. So we're going to, we're looking for the active underscore plugins. Now for the value, we need to add uh, something that says get the options and we are getting the active plugins. So we're getting get options. Sorry, this is an underscore. So get options is a function and then you close it up, of course. And we're going to look for active plugins. So we are looking for that. If this is not available for us, then what we're going to do is we're going to return 
we will not allow the plugin to actually process. We're going to start building our class for the gateway, but we'll have to check if some particular classes of our WooCommerce actually exist. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add an action, and this add action, we're going to look for one thing. So we're going to hook into the plugins loaded. So if our plugins are loaded, then we're going to look for a function and that function we're going to call uh, noob to initialize the noob payment. Then we just need to add a priority of 11. We're not passing any other arguments. So that's good enough. So what we're going to do is create a function and call it a no payment init. Then we're going to check for our class and then instantiate that class. So we're going to look for if the class exists and what class are we looking for? We are looking for the payment gateway class. So we're looking for the WC payment gateway. And that's what we are looking for. So if that class exists, then we're going to do something. And that means we're going to create our new class and it's going to be extending. So it will extend. It extends the WC pay payment uh, gateway. It extends that class and then uh, so now we are going to begin to run it. So we save this and you won't see anything active per se, but we'll just test our plugin to see if it's uh, still active. It should be get option. Get option is actually running into our database to check. So make a correction. That's why it's always good to actually test. So I'm going to activate this. Still active. I'll just activate the WooCommerce to allow that to go through so that we have our function. So after extending that class, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start working on our gateway and we need to just instruct for it to have our construct method. Now, while we're extending the classes, you're going to realize we're now working in what we call object oriented programming. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, add a public function that is accessible by all and just say we're going to construct. So we add our construct method and in that met in this method we just require to say since we're extending the payment gateway some of these are variables that we're going to be accessing are already there. So we're going to get the ID simply which is the ID of uh, the gateway and the ID is going to be um, noob payment for now. That will be good enough. Semicolon to terminate it. We're going to get the next thing that we need to do is we can add an icon. That is the small logo that you usually see when you're out on the checkout and you're paying and you see a small icon right at the bottom that says uh, use this payment to pay. So, so what we'll do is I will apply filters to it. So apply filters, I will use the WooCommerce underscore uh, noob icon. So the next thing that we need to do is pass in the value. So it will be stored in a plugin, in the plugin somewhere, like we'll do plugins underscore URL, put a comma there, then append maybe assets, and then call it icon.png. So we'll have to add that in our assets. Otherwise that will end up failing. And then we'll need to do it this. We're going to append has fields. Now basically this is going to allow us to add fields inside our WooCommerce. For, uh, for example, when we come here, we'll be able to, when we click setup, we shall be able to see those fields <coughs> that we fill in for the details. Maybe it's an API key we need to import and so on. So this method is about that. So for now, we'll say it's false. And then we tap another method, which is this. And then we're going to append uh, the method title. So the method title for now, we shall uh, allow it to be translatable. And the method title, we're going to call it a uh, noob payment. And we shall see where that applies uh, physically. 
and for now we shall just give it a wc noob oh our text domain is actually here noob pay so we don't need to create another one uh, the other thing that we need to do is we actually need to tap this and then we shall say method description and the description we're going to have we're also going to have it translatable and then what i'll do is just copy what we have here and just say no no local payment system that's a that's a method description so we're going to tap the other method that's open for us to in the extension is a neat form fields and that's uh that we're going to add that inside our own class so if i copy this i'm going to add that field so copy this and then give it this is the new name for this i'll leave this empty so that it doesn't fail we need that method that's why we're going to describe our fields and then i'll duplicate this and add another field that says uh, init the settings and that's going to allow us to actually initialize our settings so we need to save this give this a refresh uh, nothing is broken so we are still good after adding that now we are going to start adding some content to our init form fields and those are the fields that we're going to see when we come to add content to our, our field so what we're going to do here first of all is we, we want to enable it so we're going to say this this class form fields that's what we need to, to tap the function we're going to apply filters that means we're going to basically just uh, edit so we'll add in a filter and we'll say uh, this is going to be the woo noob pay fields it can be anything because some at one point we might want to tap into that and edit it and we're going to have an array of actually fields that we're going to add i'll terminate this with a semicolon so that i don't forget and then the first thing we're going to do is uh we're going to say is it enabled and then uh, we'll add another array to this so we're basically working with a multi-dimensional array and then of course a comma at the end since we're going to add more fields and then we'll add a title to this and say is it enabled enabled or disabled so we'll allow this to also be translatable so let me just copy this and paste it here and then we shall say is it enabled enable or disable so if i save this this is an error so if i save this and come back and reload here we don't see anything happen because we haven't yet announced to WooCommerce that we actually have a new uh, payment gateway that's coming. So I'm actually going to do that right now so that we can start seeing some of the changes. So we're going to create a, a little function here and it's going to <coughs> be a filter hook and the hook we are jumping into is actually called a WooCommerce payment gateways we are actually going to get we're going to add a function now and we're going to call it a uh, noob payment gateway which is a different function so i uh, will delete delete but let's make this a little more dis descriptive so we'll add to who the no payment gateway so this is a little more descriptive so let's jump right down so give it a function add this and then go for that function and what we're going to do this particular filter remember filters just edit uh, they don't write any new content so it comes with a it comes with a gateways argument so this argument needs to be picked and we need to also return it at the end of the day so we pick it and then we return it so get ways if we don't do anything to it our fun, our program will still run but we can also edit it and say we're getting the gateways array we are going to append a new uh, item to it so terminate this we're going to get our class that we've extended which is wc node pay and we're going to throw it in here yeah, that's the name of the class and let's see what happens when we reload here 
you'll actually see that now we have a new payment coming into our commerce which is our new field uh, we have a little bit of error here and it's an error coming from when we are describing our plugin so this is a function sorry and then we're also going to make some corrections to our new payment which is this here we can see we can see that we can actually enable it or disable it because of this field that we've added that is enabled and then uh, we can save changes have it available we see the description we added new payment local content payment systems right here and then we can actually when we go to manage we see that it is saying yes because we checked it before and that's what this is doing if we go back and we uncheck it and save and we actually go to the setup you'll see that it says no and that means we are already a step ahead so the next thing we're going to do is add a proper title add a proper description add instructions to our content area here so we have a type we have enabled this and what we're going to do is we're going to make it better so we're going to change this type instead of having it as a normal field we're actually going to have it as a checkbox so I'll save this reload and we actually have it as a checkbox that is much better you never know how people spell but they never get this wrong so WooCommerce has made a very good way of uh, applying forms in the plugin so we just tap into that and we use it we'll add a label and the label we are going to also have it uh, translatable for now since we plan to use this plugin uh, in different places so the label will be quite simple we can just say enable or disable no payment and we are seeing that we're actually just working on one field so next time you'll see this makes it easy uh, as we apply the other fields we'll see that working out well and uh, we'll default it to let the shop owner activate uh, this field so we'll default it to no save this so everything works out well uh, we see this new block of payments which is here we can always adjust it to make it a little more descriptive and better the next thing that we need to do is uh, I'll just duplicate this and then go into the title in the title field we want to have a proper title so we'll give it a noob payments gateway and then the title the type is a text uh, we want to add and say add a new title so we we have a title here in this place we won't have a label we'll have a description and the description will say add a new title for the noob payments gateway so we have the description ready default we shall just add it as a something that's translated already we we'll just copy this and as the default and then we'll add a description tooltip and say this tip and then we'll just add that as true and save so let's see what that means when we come here we have the new payments gateway which is our title and it's having that as default this is the default text in there and then we can add a title now this is what uh, add a title for the new payments gateway that customers will see when they are in the checkout page so essentially that's what this title is for it's actually going to go to the end we can't see this description but when we come here to this tooltip we're able to see uh, what we are talking about so that's the beauty of adding this description tooltip as true and then adding this description so I can actually move this down so that they match together and they make better sense that way in my code so we have a title we can have also the description so we'll go for the description we already saw a default description when we were the payments place which is this uh, but as we set up we can just change all that away so what we'll do is uh, we have the title and we'll just say this in the description leave it translatable the next thing that we need to do is add a type the type is a text area because it might be really long a description is given here we'll leave the, the tooltip uh, active and then uh, we shall just add a default please remit your payment to the shop to allow for the 
delivery to be made. We can change this word the shop to whatever our shop name will be. So when we reload this here, we actually see that it is available. Uh, the tooltip is given and uh, the users of a plugin can always come and actually make changes to this and will actually save. So we've done that uh, description. If we need to have any special instructions, we can also add this. So instructions is the last uh, argument that's available and we can just say, so we have the instructions, we have a title. Uh, the title will be instructions. Make it short instructions. It will be a text area. We'll allow a description tooltip to be true. I will have a description. And then in the description, we'll leave this empty. In the description here, instructions that will be added to the thank you page and order email. So you might want your clients to add a special message to the order email or to the thank you page and you make provision for this right here. So yeah, we're good to go. If you wanted to add a default, you can say default instructions. And if we come back here and reload, they are that, nothing more. So this is one of the first steps we take into making our payment gateway. Now, after doing this, uh, we've added our, our form fields here. We will also need to initialize our settings. And after doing that, we're going to go for the next a function that is very important in the WooCommerce Payment Gateway. And that is the process payment uh, function. Uh, it's expected and we shall be adding that to our WooCommerce. So now let's actually work on our process payment function. So we're going to have a public function and we're going to get the process underscore payments uh, method and this is the one that actually deals with everything about the payments in terms of uh, the open end. So we're going to get the order ID which is passed as an argument and then when we get that order ID in this case is going to be what we use. So we use a WC get order and then we pass in the order ID. So our process payments method actually offers us the order ID. We we'll need this order ID to actually get which order we are talking about. This function WP, WC get order requires to have the order ID. It will give us the kind of order that we are actually going to work with, which order we're going to pay for at the end of the day. So we get the order ID. The next thing we need to do is now get the order status. Since we have the order now, we just need to get its status. So we can actually append a method to that, which is a update status. So we can immediately update the status of that order by saying, uh, want it got on hold. And what we're going to do is uh, I'll copy this translated string here. Now, when it's on hold, we're going to throw and say, awaiting noob payment. So, Immediately a customer orders, that order is actually sent to the on hold status inside. Uh, you've seen that when you go to your orders, for example, I have some orders here and they're saying processing. So we have a number of statuses in our orders. We have processing, we have on hold, uh, we have completed, we have canceled, refunded. You can also create your own methods available. So we can even just change this to pending payment so that it has the right status altogether. Let's go back to our payment gateway. Then we need to do this. We need to also, we need to check on the stock and say we need to reduce the stock levels, the order stock. Depending on how much you bought with that order, you need to change the order stock, meaning we reduce it for the next customer so that we don't have a conflict with someone saying, booked my order and I paid for it and yet I don't have it and someone will say ah sorry we ran out of stock because another client paid uh, before you did um, 
So we want to manage those issues with orders and uh, the stock. Now we're going to go to the WooCommerce, get the general WooCommerce first and say we're going to get go to the cart and we're going to empty the cart. So we empty the cart after that payment and then at the end of the day we are going to return a thank you. So we turn an array and say thank you for purchasing blah blah blah. Uh, but of course in this array we have the results which is going to be the success. So when it is a success, then we have a message that we bring and then we redirect. So we redirect uh, the person to this class and we get the get return URL. And that's the function we have. And then we pass in the order. The reason I leave this open is because when we come to our plugins in WooCommerce and go to uh, settings, we actually have a couple of things here that are advanced. So we have the different pages that are set as checkout and we don't want to conflict with how this actually works if the customer sets it up uh, or if they use the filter of changing the return URL. We want to leave that as open as possible inside our payment gateway. Now you realize there are so many steps that are missing here, but we know that after we get our order, we change the update status, we reorder the stock, then we empty the cart and then return a success. But in between here, we are able to add our own uh, payment gateway by tapping into maybe an API and adding a different function. So for example, before we reduce the order, can we maybe tap into a function that uh, clear payment with API and then do what is necessary uh, to clear. And if this comes out right, if this passes in this particular function, so we'll have a public function. Could even be private if we need to, or, but we'll leave it as public. So clear with payment API. And then when that passes, then we can reduce the order, then clear the cut and then do what is needed. So we can add our own methods uh, in here and that will allow us to, to do whatever we need to do. That's how we create our, uh, our payment gateway. So what I'm going to do now is actually go back and activate our, our payment. I'm going to go back to our settings and then I'm going to activate uh, the new payments gateway. And let's try go and make some orders. So cut, view cut, run to the checkout, fill in our pieces. We don't have our payment gateway. Okay, so let's set that as on as managed. That is saved. And let's come back to our checkout, reload this, and we'll now see that we have our payment which is no. It has a broken has a broken image here, which we set to go into the plugins uh, folder, and it's expected to be in there. So we we'll need to correct this uh, very well. Uh, of course, this expects an argument that I didn't put. So let's correct this. And then, of course, file. And then take away this concatenation mark. Let's reload this here. It is still broken. That is fine. But at least we know that it's going in the right plugin in the assets folder and in the icon. So we can always have that here. So we open an assets folder and then, then I'll jump into this and then I'll just drop this and then call it, uh, rename this and call it icon, the PNG. Let's see, yep. So let's see how this works out. If I reload, you can see we have a small icon there. It's working out well. The only thing that we don't have here is the name of our plugin, which is the payment. So I'm wondering what's happening. So let's have this reload. It's not working uh, because we have not saved the user variables. So what we're going to do is just come back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this class and get the title. We're going to save it in our database and say this dash get options, get option. So we're getting this from the database in our WooCommerce and we're going to get 
the title and pass it in title i'll duplicate this for the different pieces so we have a title we have a description in order to clear up our issue that we are having we need to add an action which is going to update our payment gateways so we come back to our construct function here which which automatically runs when the class is executed so we're going to add an action that's going to take uh, the hook that we're tapping into and that is a uh, the hook is a WooCommerce update options gateway so the action is a WooCommerce update options payment gateways and then the next thing we do is actually we append to it the id so we look for the this and then uh, we get the id this id which we saved here has no payment and then the next thing that we do is uh, we add the array which is the last uh, we're basically saying this is the field this is the method we want you to run and we say this it is a method inside this class and we shall say process admin options Let's save that so we're going to come back here and try to make some changes to no payment delivery to be made default instructions here let's save this and we actually see that all our settings are actually saved and if we come back to our checkout and reload we'll see that we now have our title showing up no payments we have our instructions showing up and when we click order it says error checking <laughs> processing out after adding that action to allow us save our settings here we need to add one more action that will allow us to say thank you in a proper way so we'll add an action and that hook is uh, the WooCommerce thank you and it also takes uh, the same id that we have here so we're going to basically just append this to our thank you make that so it takes in the WooCommerce thank you then append the id which is our new payment and then after the comma we're going to add the array to signify that we want to tap into a method here and say this and then we shall add our method which is uh, thank you page thank you underscore page so this is a method that now we have to create so let's go down where we create our functions and we'll just say public function test it here and then do some magic with it so what we're going to do with our, our thank you function is we're going to say if which is a conditional then we'll do something so if this instructions if it is true if the instructions are true then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to echo with a wp auto paragraphs and then we shall just say these instructions and we'll pass them in Take this away save let's try to save these changes and then go to try our checkout then press the order i think there's something wrong with our status so i'll just do this on hold and save this let's try to place our order again after refreshing we can now use this to pay for our goods and allow our customers to do so much more so thank you for watching i hope uh, you enjoyed this video if you have any questions please leave them in the comments um i'll just throw this code up on uh, github and then you can follow along and don't forget to like the video if you liked it and uh, then subscribe if you haven't considered yet cheers